So hand over your eggs or I'll sue you. No, no, that's not what it's about. Hey, Kathy Bernardo from the Northeast Assisted Fertility Group. And today I'm talking about the egg donor contract. And this is an agreement between the recipients and their egg donor. And this is only really used for private or agency matches. Because if you get a donor or if you donate directly with a clinic or through a frozen egg bank, there'll just be some consent forms to sign because the clinic is a kind of intermediary. But this is a kind of a private match. So good agencies and the best ones make sure that there's an egg donor contract in place and that is an understanding between the recipients and the egg donor, okay? And it's important that the agency not just hand you a contract to sign. That would be a conflict of interest. Both parties, the recipient and the donor should have their own independent lawyers. And it sounds a little scary, but it really is not a big deal, but it's important because it protects both parties. Now, the recipient's lawyer would know the recipient's name, but only know the donor by her code. And the donor's lawyer will know the donor's name, but not know the recipient's names and know only them by code. So it's a mutually anonymous negotiation. And it's also really important to work with lawyers who have a lot of experience in these kinds of contracts because they're very specialized and it's very easy to treat it just like a regular old contract and make a lot of errors. And an agency like ours, we work with a handful of lawyers who have a lot of experience in these contracts and we use the same lawyers over and over again to do them. Uh, we always review the contracts to make sure they're correct and fair. And they really are easy. It sounds more complicated than it should be, but it really is a pretty easy thing. Now, the thing to understand about an egg donor contract, it's not like another kind of contract where you're signing over a house or a car. Um, it's not like once you sign on the dotted line, that means you must donate your eggs. And this is for the donors as well as for the recipients. It doesn't mean once the recipients sign that you know they can't change their mind. Either party can walk away at any point Point. Even after they sign the contracts, this is not something that's going to go before a judge and say, you signed this contract, therefore you must donate your eggs. That isn't what this contract is about. The contract just lays out the kind of ground rules and parameters of the match. Where does the medical work take place? What is the general schedule? What are the blackout dates? What is the compensation? When are those funds held in trust? Is there wage reimbursement? Is there travel reimbursement? Um, health insurance coverage, all of that. That's what's covered. So just a, a laying out of the ground rules of the match. And like I said, it doesn't mean you must donate your eggs. No one can forcibly make you donate your eggs from the recipient's end. Uh, you don't have to go through with it after you sign the contract. There cannot be any punitive terms in the contract for the donor. Um, that if it doesn't work, you owe us all, all the money we spent and, all, and we don't get your compensation. No, 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 that is absolutely not allowed. And remember that you recipients from your side, you can walk away at any time and the donor's done all this work and she gets nothing. So again, this is not a way to enforce or punish. That is not the point of the contract. If both parties go into it happily, voluntarily, and it just protects their privacy, protects confidentiality. So for example, also, once the eggs are removed from the donor's body, they become the property of the recipients. That's in the contract. The donor cannot claim any custody, that kind of thing. This is what the contract ensures, just the ground rules of the donation, and it's not um, a jumping point for litigation. We have never seen that. We have never seen any kind of litigation between donors and recipients, and we've been doing this for a really long time. And that's also because we have a very good contract, but we've never had any issues with litigation between recipients and donors. So how the contract is done is the recipient's lawyer will draft the contract and review the terms with the recipients, then send that contract over to the donor's lawyer. The donor's lawyer will review it with the donor, and then both parties sign the contract. 
and that's it. Sometimes the clinic will need some confirmation letter that the contract was signed and therefore the whole procedure could take place after that. Some clinics um, don't care about that, but some of them do. And again, the contract is not a contentious document. There isn't a lot of fighting and negotiating. It really is, it's an easy and smooth negotiation. So I hope that was helpful. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel, put any comments below, and go to assistedfertility.com for more information on egg donation and surrogacy. Thanks so much for watching.